Hello everyone, and welcome to Maverick Excelsior's general usage tutorial. To begin, go to the Excelsior website and log into your account. Then, go to the Excelsior editor and wait for it to load before you can import your 3DM file. Note that your model must be arranged in layers, as covered in a previous tutorial. You can either drag and drop the 3DM file in the main area of the editor or use the import button. Once imported, you will see that default materials have been applied to each layer. First of all, let's learn how to navigate in Excelsior. Left click is used to orbit and right click is used to pan. The mouse wheel is used to zoom in and out. Excelsior navigates smoothly while delivering a high quality picture effortlessly at all times. Now, let's take a look at the materials section. Here you can see what materials have been applied to each rhino layer. In the first gem layer, for example, we find diamonds. Let's change these by clicking choose another material. This will open a list with our library's carefully calibrated gem materials. Let's pick a Madagascar ruby this time. Within each material's attributes there's a hue control where you can subtly change the tone within physically plausible limits. Adjustments here make the tonality lighter or darker, according to the natural range of the mineral. The absorption value defines how strongly light gets tinted as it travels through the stone, resulting in lighter or deeper colors. Let's change the material of layer gem 03 to a diamond fancy pink. The pink color may not be very noticeable because these stones are very small and their absorption distance is too large. By carefully adjusting the absorption value we may gradually reveal the pink hue. But let's roll back to a regular diamond for now. Lastly, let's change the metal material. Like in the case of gemstones, Here's our carefully curated library of precious metals. In this case we will choose 18 karat rose gold. You can similarly adjust the hue, brightness, and saturation of the finish to your liking, bound to realistic tonal limits. Let's now learn how to define the light setup of our scene. In the ambiences section, you'll find both white and black environments. White ambiences are neutral and will make your jewelry design stand out, while black ambiences give a more sophisticated look where the metal and gems will shine spectacularly. Simply click on each ambience to replace the lighting of your scene, and appreciate the changes in reflections and refractions in real time. Depending on your jewelry design, some ambiences may be more suitable than others. Feel free to experiment and choose the one that enhances your model the most. In this example, we will select a white ambience. Let's move on to the settings section next. It is Excelsior's philosophy to only allow for free variable adjustments that in no way will compromise the photorealism of your scene. In the resolution roll-up you can choose different presets for various social media configurations, in addition to the ability to set a custom resolution. Double click to input custom values if needed. Next, in the pose roll up, you can adjust the ring's orientation. The resting to option is often suitable if your model in Rhino is oriented as recommended. The resting one option is a mirrored version of the former. Here, resting two will do for our ring. The ambience angle rotates the ambience should you need to reposition the reflections and refractions to better suit your design. We recommend keeping this angle close to zero because that's where the ambience was calibrated at, with models at canonical positions in mind. The shadow gamma option makes shadows darker or lighter. Shadows can be made disappear completely if your jewelry piece must be floating instead of standing on the floor. 
In the mirror roll-up you can activate floor reflection, which adds visual richness to your scene. You can adjust the intensity of the reflection all the way up to completely mirror-like using a value of 1. Our glare feature is one of Excelsior's highlights. We use proprietary technology to make your gemstones always look incredible with stunning glints. Feel free to increase the glare strength to get progressively more intense sparkles. If you switch to a black ambience, the effect will be even more noticeable and impressive. Let's switch back to a white ambience and keep going. Finally, there's the round edges parameter, which is very useful in jewelry to automatically bevel the sharp edges and corners of your geometry. To better demonstrate this effect we will open another model. But before, and in order to not lose the work we've done so far, let's export the current state of our scene using the Export Interactive button. This will download a WebEx file with the current date and time in your browser's downloads folder. Now that our scene is safe, let's open a Pearl Earrings model. We possibly want the earrings to appear floating, so first of all we will remove the ground contact shadows as explained earlier. In the materials section we will explore our library of pearls and choose one of our liking, appreciating the high quality finish. We opened this model to illustrate the use of the round edges feature. These earrings were modeled originally without any geometric beveling, so they don't render as realistically as they should. We can fix this enabling round edges from the settings panel. This will automatically bevel the metals in the scene, making a significant difference in realism. You can adjust the radius for a broader or finer effect, or toggle it on and off to better appreciate the difference. Now let's continue with our previous model where we left off. To do that, go to the Downloads folder and drag the WebEx file directly to the editor. This will fully restore our previous session. Let's render a picture to illustrate how easy and quick it is. Choose a viewpoint that you like and click the Take Picture button. Instantly, an image will be downloaded to your browser's downloads folder. As you can see here. Let's create a few more renders from different viewpoints. You can also restore the vertical pose of the ring and continue capturing renders. In no time we have created a full series of photographs. Now, let's move on to the view parameters roll up. First, you can configure the animation speed. It is recommended to use normal or slow speed as smooth movement is usually better suited to showcase jewelry. In the motion roll up, you can configure how the animation will be bookended. This chooses between constant motion or easied in or out motion. The flip option reverses the rotation direction between clockwise and counterclockwise. The boomerang option makes the video bounce back when it reaches the end. The rotation angle parameter controls how much rotation you want, with 360 degrees being a full turn. Click preview video to previsualize what these options look like in motion. To halt the preview, use the cancel button. 
feel free to try and preview different motion settings. For example, let's set the rotation angle to 90 and preview again. Since we changed the rotation angle, we may want to adjust the video speed, for example, to fast. You can additionally enable the boomerang or flip options if you like. Let's generate a complete video to illustrate the final quality of Excelsior. Set the speed to normal, motion to constant, and rotation angle to 360 degrees. Use resting 2 to position the ring correctly. Place it in a suitable position and increase the glare strength for a more spectacular effect. Now, click record video and wait for the encoding to finish. You can see the estimated time at the top. It will take about a minute, and as soon as the video is done, it will be automatically downloaded to your downloads folder. For the sake of brevity, let's fast forward this part. The video is now complete and has been downloaded to our browser's downloads folder. Here you can appreciate the spectacular photographic quality, with gems and metals looking fantastic. In the downloads folder you will end up with all the content you've generated from your model in just a few minutes, numerous instantaneous renders, a turntable, and your WebEx scene file. The last function we need to explore is Export Interactive, which allows you to embed interactive jewelry on your website, or share interactive links with your customers. We'll cover these functions in the next tutorial. That's all for now. See you in the next one.